Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to yet another episode of our interview series, the last one this year. Our today's guest is Herbert Glosch, the bass player and one of the founders of the Austrian symphonic power metal band Dragony. Herbert and I will be speaking about the band's upcoming studio album, Viribus Unitis, the process behind it, the collaborations the band did while writing this album, cyberpunk, and much, much more. But as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube and join our communities on Instagram, Facebook, or any other social media you actually hang out at to submit your questions for all future guests. Stay tuned with the updates and for more exclusive rock and metal content. Here you go. Hey Herb, how's it going, man? It's going great. That's... I hope with you too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I mean, it's getting to look a lot like Christmas. So <laughs> the mood yeah, is well, not snowing in Austria, but <laughs> yeah, same. Nothing here. Uh, it's gonna be a warm winter. And I I think we only had once below zero at this point, uh, and it's uh, it was like for a day. Uh, something yeah. like that. Warm winter stuck at home. Yeah, that's true. Huh? Yeah, but how are things in Austria actually with the with the second lockdown and everything? Do you have one? Uh, we had one. Mm -hmm. uh, we transitioned from a light lockdown to a hard lockdown mm -hmm. to a light lockdown. And today, actually, one hour ago, they announced the next hard lockdown. Oh, it's going to start on the 26th. Oh, crap, man. Yeah, they, so, they announced a hard lockdown on the 8th of... Uh, of January mm -hmm. here already. That's uh, yeah. it's gonna be yeah, for, a... for us. It's the hard lockdown till the 18th of January. Oh, okay. And then you can get tested. If you get tested, uh, then you can go to a restaurant or go out and buy stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna be in lockdown till the 24th. Oh crap, man! Uh, let's just hope that you know those those vaccines or uh, anything else. You know, just uh, is gonna work, and all of this madness is gonna be over very, very soon, man. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, but about good, the good stuff, right? I mean, uh, just yeah. after the holidays on January fifteenth, Dragon is about to drop a new album, Viribus Unitas. Yeah. Congrats on finishing it up uh, during you know all these hard times, man. I know it's tough. Uh, absolutely. Could you talk a bit about the creative process behind it? You know how did all of this yep. uh, come into this one picture? Yeah, um, well, it all started uh, when we released the previous record, Masters of the Multiverse. Mm -hmm. um, we decided that we want to do a concept record again mm -hmm. for the next one. Uh, like a little bit like going back to the roots for Dragony, because the first record we did, which was called was Legends, awesome. yeah. was a concept record also. Yeah. And then one day our singer came with this story. Mm -hmm. And he told us, yeah, guys, take a look at it, read it, what do you think of this? And we read it, and then we, thought, we said, hmm, hmm. We want to do this. <laughs> and what he gave us was basically the story, how it ended up on the record. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as it was clear, this is going to be the concept for the record, um, we sat down and talked about the details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Uh, and, you know, how do you think, you know, and this is your fourth album right now, yeah. right, with Dragony, yet your very first one with Napalm Records, right? I mean. Yeah. How does working with a label like Napalm change the album, you know, release process for you? Does it at all or not really? Um, it, it changed the, it didn't change the recording process mm -hmm. or the mixing or the, the, it didn't change the crafting of the album, mm -hmm. but it changes the release, uh, because Napalm is such a great company. They've got a person to talk about for, to, to talk to about anything. And you really get the feeling they believe in you and your product. They listen to you, to your ideas. Then they have a lot of expertise and they say, yeah, that's, that could work. That's going to work mm -hmm. or maybe something try, to change and something. Maybe, maybe, try, maybe a different approach to certain topics. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they really have a release plan, a promotional plan. And 
one thing that changed for sure is all the media attention we Absolutely. got with this record. Absolutely, yeah. I think by now we've done twice as many interviews <laughs> for this record than for all the previous ones combined. Wow, wow, yeah. But uh, I guess that helps a lot, man, absolutely, to put you out there. And do you personally think this is going to be a breakthrough album for Dragony? Uh... I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so. I mean, I think we've got a great album with a lot of diverse tracks, which cover all the spectrum the whole spectrum of Dragony, mm -hmm. and we sure hope that people also love it. Absolutely, absolutely. And you started speaking about the concept. Sorry, I, I just moved the discussion a bit, uh, you know, in a different direction. For those of you who don't know yet, um, you know, Viribusunitas concept is based around an alternative reality in Austria yeah. and the personality of the Emperor uh, Franz Joseph and his wife, Empress Sissi, who is very popular in Austria. I believe you have a museum of her, right? Uh, I remember. Yeah, so much of her. She's a, <laughs> she's a cult figure. I mean, Austrians are very fond of imperial times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we know that the Habsburg monarchy was another of these empires that rose and fell mm -hmm. throughout history. But it's one of the most recent ones. And it's still fresh in our collective memory. That is true. And at the same time, it's, it's not really true, but Austrians look forward to the past. It's interesting. That's 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 really interesting one. And together with this, you know, cyberpunk style, right? I yep. mean, are you guys a fan uh, fans of uh, the, this genre in general? I mean, why did you decide? Yep. I mean, why why did you guys decide to use this, you know, cy cyberpunk alternative yep. reality and uh, put it into metal? Um, we are fans of movies like Inglorious Bastards okay. or Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer, okay. where you take historical figures in twisted. their real historical settings and give them their, your own twist. Mm -hmm. And with Dragony, -E, uh, one of these twists is magic. Magic is real. Yeah. And then we thought, yeah, we are an Austrian band. And we're going to do one of the most famous things in Austrian history, the Habsburg monarchy and the end of Habsburg monarchy, uh, with our own twist with our own timeline yeah I'm sure so, it makes sense I got a, I got a confession to make man I I'm a huge fan of uh, of the cyberpunk um, yeah. uh, stuff like this right I I have a uh, I have a book over there. I just put it uh, on purpose for for this interview out there. But I'm Ukrainian, and a couple of years ago, there's it has become very popular over here with this comic book that came out about the alternative reality in our country in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, right after the Austrian Empire er, fell, because uh, we were one country back then, right? And all this cyberpunk stuff. But I gotta say that I've never thought of mixing it together with this power and symphonic metal, um, and uh, yet it does so extremely well. I mean, it's a, uh, they they do look cohesive, right? I mean, it's very coherent. It, it builds into to this coherent picture somehow, um, and uh, and the artwork is absolutely stunning back there. Could you talk about? Do you know who was the artist who did all the artwork for the album? Uh, the artist is Dusan Makovic from Serbia. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've worked with him before on the previous two records, mm -hmm. and he does these things that we want for a Dragony cover, like these detailed central figures mm -hmm. where your focus is, but at the same time detailed nice backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And he has just this style of drawing that we really love, and for us he's a perfect guy to do the Dragony covers. Absolutely, yeah. It looks it looks very cool, man. Uh, and what's your usual writing routine like? I mean, how do you guys divide responsibilities for who does what? Um, it really depends uh, who has the idea for the song. Uh, one of our guitarists and I usually deliver a song idea in the Guitar Pro format. Mm -hmm. um, if the song is from a singer, for example, um, he does it with his keyboard in Cubase. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there's just an idea or just the hook of a song. Mm -hmm. And one of, and this one guy who has, who has the hook in his head or down in a music file 
can't do the rest of the song. And then we present whatever we have to the rest of the guys. Mm -hmm. We decide, yeah, we're going to take that for Dragony. We're going to work on it till it, or we're going to work on it till it's Dragony. Or maybe put it back on the shelf for a later time. Mm -hmm. Maybe none of us has an idea right now. But we say, yeah, let's put it back on the shelf. Let's open it next month for something. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's sometimes it's clear this is a song that would not work with Dragony, maybe for another project or for another band or... Yeah, totally makes sense, yeah. And um, where do you guys usually look for inspiration? And you personally, right? I mean, any particular bands, uh, you know, that influenced you a lot while writing this album? Uh, well, I would say it's our usual influences, our musical heroes, bands like Blank Guardian, Aventasia, or Ed Guy, mm -hmm. Emmerfall, a lot of 80s bands. We have a song on the record, uh, Made of Metal, where we tried to catch this 80s feeling of the I'm music. I going to say yes. I was, I was going to ask about that one, because uh, while it's, uh, you know, it doesn't feel out of place on the album by no means, right? But at the same time, it did have this kind of 30-year-old sound to it, in yeah. a way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of our main songwriters is our singer, and he's a huge fan of Meatloaf, for mm -hmm. example. Really? And if you know that, and if you know Meatloaf and his discography, um, I think you can hear these influences in the tracks. Uh -huh. Okay, now it kind of makes sense. We got to ask him what uh, he wouldn't do for love, though. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he hears that a lot, man. <laughs> I guess you won't do that. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, do you have a favorite track from the album? Just one that you cannot wait to play live? Uh, I would say... For the live thing, it would be Legends Never Die. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I guess it's a, it's huge fun to play Legends Never Die live, but my favorite favorite track to listen to would be the title track, Vila Busunitis. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. And uh, while we're talking about, you know, playing live, uh, again, hopefully you and the other bands are going to be able to do that soon. But do you have actually any plans to support the album with a tour or, you know, on a road yeah. next year? We are in talks about a tour okay. or, or about touring, but with the whole pandemic going on, there's nothing certain right now, nothing to be sure. Um, we plan to do a streaming concert. Mm -hmm. Details to be announced soon, as far as I know. Okay. Um, we want to do a, an album release show in our home city in Vienna in Austria. Nice. Well, middle of February. And... Yeah, we don't know yet if this can happen or not. Lockdowns change every two weeks and we will see how the pandemic evolves. Yeah, absolutely. With, with all the plans. We have a few other things up our sleeves that would have, without the pandemic, would have already been announced. But right now we're waiting with an announcement until we are sure that we can hold a date. Yeah, you don't want to be one of those bands who announce something and then, you know, cancel it. times. Yeah, I mean, it's not worth it, absolutely, man. And uh, you know, on this record, you've also collaborated with the, you know, with a bunch of musicians from yeah. a variety of bands. Uh, uh, yeah. And actually, in terms of mixing and mastering, it was done by Sieb, right, from uh, Orden Organ, yeah. right? Yes. Who actually just finished mixing and mastering a an album for a death metal band, Asphyx, which is very different, man. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool. But uh, what do you guys? Uh, what do you think those guys, you know, brought on the album in terms of the sound? Um, well, the sound was the main responsibility of Seb Levermann from Orden Organ, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, He's a great engineer, he's a great guy, he's amazing to work with. And we especially chose him because we know that he can deliver this wall of sound. Mm -hmm. And that he can make the guitars very present. Despite go a lot of going on, like the orchestration with the Dragony record. Mm -hmm. And compared to the previous two records, and especially Master of the Multiverse, we wanted to have louder guitars. Mm -hmm. and more present that yeah and this wall of sound this punch in the sound and we knew that Seb can do that absolutely and, yeah. and, and he did um, he did amazing work so we are 
very glad we found him and we could work with him. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, um, you know, moving away from the album itself, right? While, while staring in the topic, obviously. Uh, one question that I wanted to ask you. Yeah. What is your guilty pleasure in terms of music? Uh, what do you blast when you're drunk, which is not metal? Uh, that, I would say, really depends on the company. Come on, man. It's Selena Gomez. I know that. <laughs> uh, no, no, not quite. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> but there's um, a disturbing amount of Backstreet Boys in there. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, you cannot go wrong with Backstreet Boys. I've never, I've never met a couple of metalheads who, at three in the morning, super drunk, did not shout, "Everybody, <laughs> yeah!" <laughs> I can see it. Uh, maybe and just maybe, you guys should think about a metal uh, cover on this one uh, for for. For the next album or for the tour, who knows? Maybe it's going to be fun, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day <laughs> we will see. But yeah, apart from that, guilty pleasures are. Uh, I would. Uh, what's the genre called? Ah, this is embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> electronic music. Uh huh. Uh, it was synthwave. Okay. Okay. So basically, cyberpunk music. Yeah. <laughs> it basically is. Um, absolutely. Uh, man, uh, I'm conscious of your time, so just a couple of more questions, if you don't mind, and, and that's about it, man. Um, who would you absolutely die for to play with on stage? Is there just, you know, one band that you would, you know, you would all agree that if you would have one wish, you would choose it uh, to play on stage with them? Um, I guess so. And who is that? Uh, living or dead? <laughs> Any. <laughs> um, I would say for the living, it would be Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden, okay. Okay. That would just be awesome. Mm -hmm. Share a stage with Iron Maiden. And uh, with the ones who are not, you know, with the non... Unfortunately, uh... Unavailable uh, <laughs> musicians. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, that's hard. Is it I, too many? Yeah. Yeah. Too many gone, I would say. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Too many gone. Um, and, uh, and just the last one. This is something we usually do, you know, to close the show. And I would absolutely love to hear it from you, especially because it's the very last uh, interview we're doing this year. What is your absolutely craziest uh, touring or concert story? Or if you cannot, you know, think of one, what is the most memorable, what was the most memorable show for you in your career? Uh, well, the most memorable show with Dragon E, I would say, was uh, supporting Blind Guardian mm -hmm. in Vienna as a direct support with 45 minutes of playing time. That was just crazy, and it was like knighthood for a uh, back then pretty young band. Mm -hmm. And one of the craziest stories was, uh, I think it was Wacken 2018, mm -hmm. Wacken Open Air, yeah, where I met the guys of Ailstorm and started mm -hmm. drinking with Ailstorm. <laughs> After all the show the dance was last evening, <laughs> and we just got super drunk, <laughs> and yeah, and then at one time Ailstorm left because they've been too tired or something, mm -hmm. or had to travel somewhere else. Ailstorm does not quit drinking, as far as I know. <laughs> Maybe on their ship, you know, they would sail <laughs> yeah. away while drinking rum, <laughs> and it was then. I fell down because I was just too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> fell down standing. It took me 29 years of my life to fall down standing, but I did it. <laughs> Never happened since. And kids don't drink. <laughs> it's bad for you. <laughs> and then, yeah, one of the guys from Anastasia helped me up, and it was just, just such, such a great time. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, just 
speaking and hearing about that, man, just uh, made me realize of how much I personally, and I believe that all the other metalheads out there miss concerts and go into concerts yeah. and, you know, drinking beer with an absolute stranger sometimes. And, uh, yeah. Which is absolutely amazing. And if you don't mind, I, I, I said that this was the last question, but um, I, I got to ask this one. What do you personally think will happen to the music industry and rock and roll and metal in particular after the pandemics? Um, will we get back to normal and to the way it used to be? I sure hope so. Um, because like you said, there's such a huge part missing with no live shows, no tours, no nothing or just going out to a rock pub or a metal pub and drinking a beer with some strangers yeah. and talking about anything. And I hope that it's going back to normal and I hope that this will happen rather sooner than later. But when this will happen, I can't say. But as soon as this pandemic is over, I think there are gonna be so many tours and so many shows. Absolutely and so much new music absolutely um, it's going to be released until then because fans can't tour right now so then going to the studio but yeah i i think there's going to be a kickstart or probably not a kickstart because every country does their own thing but there's going to be such a great feeling of liberation and freedom again as soon as you're going to the to your first show and then to your first festival Absolutely. after all this is over Absolutely, man. Let's just pray that 2021 is going to be great for metal and, and for rock and roll and that you and all the other bands are going to be able to hit the road again. And it looks like I'm going to be at the show every week, at least for yeah. next year, if everyone is going to, is going to come. It's going to be packed uh, and yeah. hopefully that will actually happen man um absolutely thank you so much for your time herbert any last message for the fans anything you want to share with them thank you for the interview was uh, had a great time and i would say stay safe stay healthy sit this through the good times the great times are gonna come back until then rock on Perfect. Thank you very much, man. Again, just as a reminder, Dragonese's uh, fourth studio album, Veribus Unities, will be out on January 15th via Napalm Records. Make sure to check out. It's a great, coherent and uh, very powerful album. Um, great stuff, man. Herbert, thanks a lot, man. Merry Christmas and uh, happy holidays to you. Rock on, man. You too. Yeah, thanks. Bye.